Uh, Gentleman from Louisiana. Thank you, Chairman Spratt. I apologize for uh, being tardy and getting to the floor to, to share this time with you. I seem to be spending an inordinate amount of time uh, trying to explain to mm -hmm. my constituents some of the false information that is getting uh, put out there as though the deficit showed up yesterday at our doorstep, unbeknownst to anyone before. Uh, some eight years ago, uh, we had an estimated $5.6 trillion surplus projected out over the next 10 years. And as we stand here today, that surplus has turned to a deficit of in excess of $10 trillion, and that is on budget. And I know I don't need to explain that to you, uh, but off budget, I guess it's another several trillion dollars. And then if you go and use the, uh, uh, the accrual form of accounting as businesses do and people that are in the business world would understand, we're at $56 trillion in growing deficit, not talking about the number of jobs. So if we're out here in an economy, and, and of course the, the, a lot of what I hear from people is there's so much waste in the stimulus bill, uh, the, the things that were there or a minuscule part that were made to sound like it was a whole package full of wrought with nothing but, but people's special projects. And as we move to try and remove some of those things and get a viable bill that addresses stimulating the economy, that addresses putting people back to work, uh, that addresses the needs of trying to keep the United States economy from collapsing. Because if we don't do that, uh, I think the irony is, is that People around the world are looking to the United States while each one of their governments are trying to figure out what it is they need to do to stabilize their economy. They're watching the United States because we're the kingpin. If we fold the whole world, we're going to be the tail that wags this dog, and we're going to be the people that can hopefully keep our nation afloat and keep the rest of the world hoping uh, that we keep away from a depression as our forefathers, our, my parents and my grandparents uh, experienced and few that still live today remember. Uh, but when we start looking at what has occurred in this nation, uh, the, the, the relevant uh, uh, parties that were running the government over the last eight years, uh, borrowing money, spending money, right now the fourth largest item in our budget is the interest on the money that our government has borrowed. And 40 percent of our debt, I think is the correct amount, is held by foreign countries. We're already leveraged. We're a country that used to be a gross producer of, uh, of agriculture. We used to be able to hold our own in manufacturing, uh, energy independent. We're none of those anymore. And so as we move forward, we are now faced with, or placed in our lap, is the, not the opportunity, but placed in our lap is the disaster that has been laid in, in, at our doorstep, and now we have to figure out how to get us back, uh, how to stabilize this economy, how to fill that gap of the trillions of dollars that's been robbed of it, robbed from it, so that we can move forward, so that my children, my constituents' children, and all the constituents in this country's children and grandchildren can hope to have a better future, and we shouldn't be the people uh, that have to break, bring, be the bearer of bad news. Um, what we have to, facing us today, uh, as you've shown, uh, just in one year, 3.6 million jobs lost, uh, some 500 plus thousand in the last month. Um, that is not good government working for the good of the people. Um, so we've got a lot that we, can, we need to do, and I thank you for the opportunity to join you here on the floor this afternoon. I'd like the gentleman now yield to the gentleman from Connecticut. Yeah,